In his book, Sapiens, historian Yuval Noah Harari concludes by saying that we humans are more powerful than ever before, but we have very little idea what to do with all that power. Worse still, humans seem to be more irresponsible than ever. We are accountable to no one. We are consequently wreaking havoc on our fellow animals and on the surrounding ecosystem, seeking little more than our own comfort and amusement, yet never finding satisfaction. Harari's insight calls for a radical reevaluation of our ethical relationship with the natural environment. Deep ecology is a theory in environmental ethics that undertakes this task. Deep ecology was popularized by philosopher Arne Ness. Ness claimed that there are two strands in the environmentalist movement. On the one hand, we have shallow ecology. This approach is mainly concerned with addressing the bad environmental effects of industry and how this affects human interests. Shallow ecology also focuses on promoting sustainable activities such as recycling and green technology. Now proponents of deep ecology claim that this is all well and good, but shallow ecology doesn't go far enough. It's shallow in the sense that it neglects what deep ecologists consider the underlying causes of environmental problems. Unlike shallow ecology, deep ecology emphasizes the cultural and ideological dimensions of ecological problems. For example, our socioeconomic system may cultivate an attitude in which we view nature as merely an object that we can use. For deep ecology, this attitude about our relationship toward nature is a deeply rooted cause of environmental problems. So ultimately, people need to change their consciousness to address the root cause of environmental problems. Let's look at this idea in more detail. For deep ecology, a common but mistaken view of our own nature is the fundamental cause of ecological problems. It's a mistake to view ourselves as distinct from the natural environment. And it's a mistake to conceive of our egos as atomistic and isolated from other beings. So for the deep ecologist, addressing environmental problems ultimately requires correcting this view by attaining a deeper understanding of our true selves. Now, unfortunately, correcting this misunderstanding of our nature will be difficult since it's deeply ingrained in our culture. According to deep ecology, pursuing self-realization is the key to understanding our true nature. In this process, we gradually become aware of ourselves as fundamentally interconnected with everything in nature. We start to see ourselves as more than a narrow ego, and we begin to identify with all other beings. Through self-realization, we begin to see ourself as an ecological self. As Arnie Ness puts it, the ecological self is a self that is in of and for nature from our very beginning. Now for philosophers Arnie Ness and George Sessions, this ecological understanding of ourself supports eight principles of deep ecology. First, all life has value in itself, independent of its usefulness to humans. Second, richness and diversity of life helps the realization of these values and are valuable in themselves. Third, Humans have no right to reduce this richness and diversity except to satisfy vital needs. The fourth principle says that the impact of humans in the world is excessive and getting worse. Human lifestyles and population are key elements of this impact. Fifth, the diversity of life and cultures can flourish only with reduced human impact. The sixth principle says that policies affecting basic economic, technological, and ideological structures must change and the resulting state of affairs will be deeply different from our own. Seventh, the ideological change involves appreciating life quality rather than adhering to an increasing standard of living. In other words, there will be a profound awareness of the difference between big and great. And finally, those who subscribe to these points have an obligation to participate in the attempt to implement the necessary changes. All right, in this video, we introduce the difference between shallow ecology in deep ecology, and we saw that deep ecology recommends a radical shift in our attitude regarding our relationship with the natural environment. Thanks for watching.